My next person that I'm bringing up to stage is a very lovable character. We had to go out and get wasted so we could bond and make sure we could make it through this comedy tour together. Now this guy has the hair of Elvis, the charm of John Candy from Uncle Buck, and the voice of Johnny Cash from karaoke. I would love to introduce my lovable friend, Dylan! Myself before I have to go to work. And about half 
halfway through filling this cup up, I realized someone had burned a cigarette hole in the side of this Taco Bell cup. So it starts spraying out on my roommate's CD from this hole that I have to plug, and the CDs were coated. But they, they were R. Kelly CDs, so I figured that was kind of like poetic justice. <laughs> right? He pees on people. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I plug the cup up, I fill it, I put the cap on. I live in an apartment building. Of course, naturally, I live on the sixth floor. I got to ride the elevator all the way down, holding this cup with my neighbors, which is just another thing to add to my shame book. Uh, because of the smell, you know, no one would notice it was just a Taco Bell cup that happened to be dripping a little bit from the cigarette hole. But uh, the smell was sort of like, um, we guys are familiar with eating asparagus, right? Yeah, sort of like that, mixed with a night of heavy drinking. <laughs> awesome! In a confined elevator. And I, I kid you not, I wish this was a joke. I wish this wasn't true. But on the second floor of the bottom of this cup, this wax paper cup was so soggy, it fell out. Uh, so that's why I get the stairs now. Only go down, but going up, I'm still too lazy. I don't care if you're into my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, much. You know, what's in a blue moon? Who doesn't, right? Uh, so, with that story in mind, probably some of those things on my carpet might fall. Oh, well. Oh, so, uh, so I was reading this article on the internet, and uh, this couple wanted to immigrate to New Zealand, the man and his wife, and they're both pretty heavy people, about equally heavy. And the man is allowed to immigrate, but the woman is not allowed to immigrate because they thought this should be a drain on their national health care. And uh, also, in a related story, New Zealand just changed their flag to a t-shirt that says, no fat chicks. So, <laughs> well, honestly, they say, it's a, they say it's about socialized health care. They say, hey, you know, we can't have these people be a drain on our economy. But I think it's actually from the influx of Lord of the Ring nerds. They're amazing. Trust me, I'm fat, I'm a nerd, and I would totally go there. And I think that's their strategy to turn us away. And that's smart thinking. That's smart politics. Yeah, I'm politicking. <laughs> that's right. So, um, my, uh, my grandma, I don't know, all, all my cousins and me, we're all getting to that age where we're, we're away from home, we're going and doing our own thing, starting our lives, getting married, that sort of stuff. And uh, my grandma wanted to have this picture taken. She got all the grandkids together wearing matching red polo shirts, standing in an autumn forest background at 6 o'clock in the morning, taking this family picture. And uh, first of all, what about how to wear matching outfits? Is anyone looking at this picture going to think that maybe we're not together already? We really need a uniform. But, so I asked my grandma, I said, Grandma, I don't really have to do this. I mean, come on. Can we just take a picture of all together? She says, Dylan, please. It's for me, all the grandkids are grown up. This may not all be together again. And I said, Grandma, how, how could you even say that? It's not going to be the last time that all the grandkids are together. I mean, um, well, what about your funeral? <laughs> I won't be there for that. I showed up for Grandma's funeral. God knows you're going to need pole bearers, and I don't know who else is going to do it. Cousin Chris is built like a linebacker, so I know she's going to be there. That's what's going to happen. They are. They're going to do that. They're going to do that. So, um, something happened to me. I was at a bar downtown. In Boise, and this woman was looking at me from across the room, and uh, I don't know, she was smiling at me, which is something that doesn't happen a lot for me <laughs> outside of stand up. And I'm thinking, I'm going to kind of clean myself up. And uh, she, she goes a little closer, and as she took another look at me, she just sort of pretends that this eye contact moment never happened, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I wasn't expecting a lot. But um, at least I can say I'm hot from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> which, which some people, that's more than some people can say is all I'm saying. You know? At least I got that one thing. I can have a long distance relationship. <laughs> not, not, like, not, not like a normal long distance relationship where we have to send pictures over email or anything. That wouldn't work. But uh, one where we could like stand across from a field from each other. Also, we'd save a lot of minutes for our phone. We don't have to have phones. We can just shout. It's a bit of a private field. I'm not see it's a private field. Uh, <laughs> so if you know women in fields and women with blurry vision, uh, but it'd be great. We'd just be like, hey, hey what, what are you wearing? Our kid with a phone sex. Oh, that sounds hot. It's really blurry from over 
here, but I think it'll work out. I think it'll work. Um, speaking of relationships, sex. It's wrong to have sex with dead people. That's right. Fact. Fact. I know this. I'm not going to raise no fool. But let me ask you a question. And here's where I think the line sort of gets blurry. If you'll go with me. Is it still wrong if, um, if they were alive when you initially started? <laughs> Donkey style. 